And then here they're displaying a lot of the items from the Unabomber's shed. Let's go take a look at that. This is book collection. And some of his tools. And then this is a replica of the bomb planted by the Unabomber, November 15th, 1979, flight from Chicago to Washington, D.C. And then this was the scale that he used during the bomb making process. And Ted Kaczynski's Bible. And these are Unabomber evidence bags. Here's American sniper Chris Kyle. Signed a book. Clint Eastwood made the movie about his life, his story. Some have disputed, saying here that sadly he and his friend were at a gun range and were shot and killed by an ex-Marine, Eddie Ray Ralph. This is going to be a sad one. Sean, this is the 9-11 section. I remember receiving a phone call that morning. I was supposed to be going to work and got a call from my boss saying, hey, you don't have to come in today if you're not okay with it. And I said, why? He said, haven't you turned on the TV yet? Of course, planes attacked World Trade Center and here's some the twisted wreckage. So many innocent lives lost that day. I never thought we'd see a day worse than this day, but this year has somehow given it a run for its money, that's for sure. I mean, it is crime, so it makes sense that it's in here. So this case could be interesting. I'm seeing mention of Jimmy Hoffa, Natalie Holloway, and the Black Dolly. Of course, Jimmy Hoffa disappeared without a trace. This is kind of eerie, but it says, these articles of clothing are what Natalie was wearing the night she disappeared. Clothing store Soka saved an exact duplicate of the shirt, flip-flops that Natalie was wearing with her mother for comparison the event. Man, that's crazy. I was gonna say, how did they get exactly what she was wearing? But that explains it. This is kind of showing a crime scene and kind of showing you how they go about figuring out crimes, what to look for. This is kind of an interesting exhibit. This shows you how they do lighting for crime scenes when they're doing the photography. Here's an old field crime kit, photography kit and all that stuff that you need for crime scene investigation back in the day. And this is all of being in a lab during an investigation toxicology, reconstruction, the dental process. So what happened to him, Sean? Tell us. Uh, he's got an owie. He's got an owie? He's got an owie. Very astute observation. Yeah, those look like owies to me. Okay, since we're in Alcatraz East, let's talk a little bit about Alcatraz. Here's a letter from the Birdman of Alcatraz. Robert Stroud, who actually didn't even have birds there, it was at a different prison he did that. And then here's Al Capone's Rosary. And then original Alcatraz handcuffs. And this is Alcatraz art, prison art. It says Jin Halstead. Then as you can see, this is a piece of Alcatraz, piece of the rock. Here's showing a police lineup for those of you that have never been in one. Now we're wandering into a courtroom. This is Judge Perry's robe from the Casey Anthony trial. And then these were items from Kaylee Anthony's possessions. Casey Anthony was released on this. There's Judge Perry's gavel. Now this is all contraband, prison contraband that they've confiscated over time. Different things people have made or smuggled in. Here's more Alcatraz stuff, and this is a billy club. It says Alcatraz officer's uniform pin, and Robert Stroud 
Alcatraz Letter, he was the Birdman, and Alcatraz Billy Club. And then that is a prison bat, used by the prison to administer corporal punishment. There's a ball and chain showing the chain gang mentality of prison. And your meals. I hate to give them any kind of credit here, but that is a pretty good Hollywood Monsters painting by John Wayne Gacy. So that's really crazy, that Baseball Hall of Fame piece of art is signed by like Joe DiMaggio, I see Lou Boudreau, Ernie Banks, Lou Brock, Juan Marichal, Duke Snyder, Frank Robinson, unbelievable Ricky Henderson, Mickey Mantle, and John Wayne Gacy in the corner. That is nuts. And John Wayne Gacy also hand painted this little semi truck with the seven dwarfs on it. Here's Al Capone's prison cell, his luxury prison cell. There's a gas chamber and an electric chair. They call the electric chair Old Smokey. That's crazy to look at. They said they used it from 1916 to 1960. Old Smokey. All right, we're going downstairs. This is what we came for. I love these kind of things. So as we make our way downstairs, these are all letters from Ted Bundy. All signed and written by him. Now this was one of the things I really, really wanted to see. This hits close to home because I, I remember it being summer and I remember watching TV one night and this Bronco chase coming on and just wondering like how it was gonna end, thinking that like OJ was gonna die, thought for sure. And then he didn't. Al Cowlings was driving this thing. Look, you can even see a dent on the side. And if I remember right, the story behind this was that he um, that he was given this Bronco for doing like Hertz commercials as part of his payment. And of course he was accused of killing his wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and Ron Goldman who was coming to drop off some sunglasses to her. Just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and OJ went on this big, long, extensive trial and then was acquitted. And then the house that he lived in on Rockingham became such a problem in that neighborhood that they tore it down. Got rid of the address, tore it down. Kind of crazy to see this in person. The 1993 Ford Bronco. Interrupted the NBA Finals, I remember that. Drove all over Los Angeles. They said that what they thought he was doing was he had said goodbye to his mom and then he was going to Orange County to Nicole's grave to say goodbye and then they thought he was going to at the time they thought he was going to finish himself that didn't happen then he got acquitted and then eventually ended up in prison anyway for trying to rob someone of his sports memorabilia and if you're wondering is this just a 1993 Ford Bronco or is this the real one it's the real one, I swear. Now this is the Bonnie and Clyde death car from the movie. The Bonnie and Clyde movie. Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. But the real one is at um, Whiskey Pete's on your way to Vegas. They did a pretty good job of recreating it though because I've seen the real one. They also have one of Al Capone's cars there too so it's definitely worth a trip. 1934 Ford V8. And then speaking of OJ, this is all connected to what we've been looking at. This is a Bills helmet. This was one of OJ's actual Buffalo Bills helmets, it says. And then there is him on the cover of Newsweek. He was being accused. And then this brick is from the chimney of the hideout, the last hideout for Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, this is an advertisement for Ford Motor Company capitalizing on Dillinger's fame and preference for the V8 engine. The front of the card, as seen in the mirror, asks, when will they catch Dillinger? And this radio was Ted Bundy's mother's. Says it kept him by him until he was put to death in death row. 
Given that Ted is known to have stolen most of his belongings, this gift was clearly valuable to him and he kept it for a long time. Then on top you can see the Bundy. Now speaking of John Dillinger, this was his car. 1933 Essex Terraplane, Hudson Motor Company. Said he already had a household name the time he purchased this new car from the Pothoff brothers. So here we have Ted Bundy's 1968 Volkswagen Beetle. These are two Volkswagen Beetles associated with Ted Bundy's murders, or one of the two. So this one he owned in Utah. And then there's one he stole in Florida. This is the car that Bundy owned. And it was integral to both his murders and conviction when it yielded important DNA evidence. Nice. These are kind of cool. These are called concealed curiosities, and these are all kind of like concealed weapons that they found. Some wacky things in there. Here's Kevin Costner playing Elliot Ness. These are all items from Whitey Bulger's hideout in Santa Monica. His apartment, he lived there for years undetected. Isn't that crazy? His shoes. Then here's his calendar. I'm gonna vlog that at some point. Now this is kind of interesting. I would not have expected it here, but it totally makes sense. In a crime museum, counterfeits. They're showing counterfeit bags, how you can tell what the difference is between a real and a counterfeit. And yes, in Los Angeles, I see tons of this stuff. I see places getting raided all the time down at a place called the Santee Alley, constantly. And then this case actually says this is crimes against celebrities. So we have the uh, celebrity stalker back here, Rebecca Schaefer. That piece of garbage, Robert Bardo. And then Johnny Versace, Selena, of course, Michael Jackson. There's propofol bottles. And then Mark David Chapman, who, of course, killed John Lennon. Here's some of his mail. Of course, he thought he was Colton Caulfield, catcher in the rye. So this is all sports memorabilia, and they have OJ's golf clubs, OJ Simpson's golf clubs, of course, with his Hertz pass on there, and you can see his beach hotel tag with his name on it. Definitely from one of the charity golf events or something like that. Some of his golf tees and other things, golf gloves. Aaron Hernandez, and that is a last Super Bowl that Aaron Hernandez played in. That ticket. I mean, these are having to do with Michael Vick. Those are dog torturing this devices, spite. Peter nailed collar on the inside. Claims that his wife did not want him to keep a gun associated with Unbelievable. Murder, and, so he sold it to a and then this was a the was fired both times. baseball card from Trump someone Trump from the Trump 1919 Trump Black Trump Sox Trump scandal. Trump Stating Trump all the way until his death, he was innocent. Well, we're pretty much done inside here. This is pretty much the last thing that we're going to see. This is one of the Gangs of New York costumes. Pretty great museum. I've really, I've really enjoyed being here. They have so much interesting stuff with a lot of information. I actually didn't know about a lot of it. All right, I was told I should come in and check out Goats on the Roof, so let's do it before we wrap this up. And the reason it's called Goats on the Roof is because they have goats. Hi, hi. They just want attention. Can I pet you too? Thank you. Making friends everywhere I go this trip. Oh, you want some too? Come on over. I got plenty for you. Come here. I got plenty of love for you too. Oh, 
All right, my friends, we're gonna call it a night. I hope you enjoyed seeing Goats on the Roof and Alcatraz East. I loved both of them. Sean, what'd you think? Awesome, really good. Really I guess that pretty much says it. So thank you all for watching. We'll see you all next time. Have a great night and goodbye. Yeah.